Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at this semi-replica of a Porter Garden Telescope. This telescope was designed in the early 1920s by Russell W. Porter, famous to many of you, I'm sure. And this scope, you can tell it doesn't look exactly like the original. Here's a picture of the original with all the very nice Art Nouveau uh, decorations on it. It's just a beautiful object. This one uh, doesn't quite come up to that standard. It was impossible for me to make all those fancy embellishments and so forth. But I was able to duplicate the function of the telescope. And it was a challenge. I'll tell you, it was a challenge to make this. This telescope has an aperture of three inches. It's F4, uh, like the original. So it's half scale, half scale to the Porter which was six inches in F4. Let's take a good look around the scope. There's the break. And the break doesn't need to be very strong. But you need to have that. The balance here is very, very tricky. Here's how the thing works when you turn it in right ascension. The Porter original has the same controls, but they're hidden back behind here because there's a lot of flowery ornamentation here on the front. I put mine on the front just for convenience. The gear ratio, if you want to call it that, is not really fine, but it's it's good enough. It demonstrates the action. Looking at something very far south on the horizon, maybe, maybe like that. This scope is designed this so that uh, no matter what position you get the scope into, no matter where you're looking, you can always move the eyepiece to a convenient location for viewing. For example, if I'm over here, I might be using the eyepiece like that, but if I'm over on this side of the sky, Get over here, like that, maybe. Then I have to, all I have to do is loosen that and rotate it. One of the tricky attributes of this scope is this. The eyepiece rotates. And you can rotate it in different positions. Oops. All the way around there. Here. Focus on mine is a very simple slide mechanism. It doesn't work very well. I had to spend a good deal of time <laughs> getting this thing lined up. This thing here was not perfectly square to the optical axis, so I had to spend some time filing that to make sure that that was perfectly square that off and show it to you. Oops, out of balance now, isn't it? This surface here, I spent some time filing that to make sure that when this was rotated, this would stay square. This is very nicely square with the mirror and so forth. But this wasn't, so I had to spend some time. How many times have you heard of a person using a file to align a collimator telescope? Well, I did that. All of this stuff, by the way, went through several iterations. I had to really reduce the weight up here. I found that the, no matter how much counterweight I put in the back, 
and I had to reduce this front end as much as I possibly could. Get that to be as light as possible, get this thing to be as slim as possible, even though this is aluminum, all of that stuff has to be really lightweight to even uh, have a chance of balancing the scope. As you can see, the balance is pretty good. I had to work very hard to make that happen. Let me show you a couple of interesting things about this scope. I'll have to take it apart to do that. This, this mechanism here has everything to do with polar aligning the scope. Let me just loosen this and show you the operation of the thing. You can see that we've got, uh, effectively, I call this a bowl within a bowl, although it's more like a bowl within a ring. And the bowl moves around. It can go this way and that way. It can go side to side, but that's of uh, no use, really. It's the main thing is it goes from here to here. So you can change the angle. Uh, this is exactly like the patent drawings, except for the first set of patent drawings didn't have any uh, serious ability to polar align the scope. You couldn't do this. You couldn't m make that motion. It was pretty much fixed. I, I think it had maybe a, a degree or two of adjustment, but that was it. it just had some feet on the front. But this thing works like so. There's a nut here, and then this is basically just, that's just a large fancy washer, that's all that is. And inside here, this is a bowl, at least close to a bowl. It's a sort of a hemispherical surface on the inside there that allows this little thing to, and that, it allows that to clamp down. And what's going on here is this is your, your ring, and this is a, I had to work hard to make that into a spherical surface. That is as close to a sphere as I can make on a lathe, uh, and it's pretty good. I used a, a template to, to model it and turn it and file it down and so forth. Anyway, the, the idea is that this thing can rotate back and forth. I can get this mount to go from maybe 25 to 65 degrees, something like that. The porter mount was similar, the original. I wonder if they made any, uh, like the original design in the uh, patent drawings. I wonder if they made any that did not really have much polar alignment. Uh, they may have, but every one that I've seen has this kind of a structure going on with it. Okay, I've loosened this. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like. It's a little tricky. It wants to slip and slide one way or the other. So you can go anywhere from here. Now that's way, way north. That's like, I don't know if anybody but Santa Claus lives up there. Anyway, it's way north, 65 degrees or so. And you can go down here, this is about 45 degrees, it's about 40 degrees. You can go down to maybe, you can get it down to that low, which is about as low as you'd want to go with this mount anyway. It's gonna fall out of there if it's not, if it goes much further. So uh, that's what, maybe 25, 30 degrees, something like that. That's your range with my mount. The porter was a little bit not quite as, couldn't go quite as far, but you really don't want to go too far north or south with this mount anyway, it becomes ineffective. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at my semi-replica of the Porter Garden Telescope. Thank you for watching.